Today I'm going to show you a doodle that uh, anyone can do, even non-doodlers. So if you don't doodle, this doodle is for you. <laughs> uh, we're going to draw it and then when we're done we're going to color it in with some Prismacolor pencils in this sort of staining technique that uh, I'll show you how to do. So here's how it started. This was my original doodle in one of my doodle books. You start with some simple loops and then you just outline them. Very easy to do. This one I did take my time. It's a little bit fussy, you know, because I made sure that everything was nice and even. But I discovered that if you do it wonky on purpose, it actually turns out pretty cool. <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be wonky on purpose today. So what you're going to need is some blank paper. It doesn't matter what kind, but it does need to be smooth. You're going to need a couple of black pens, a skinny one and a not so skinny one. Uh, Sharpies would work fine. You know, just use what you have. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our larger marker and we're going to make loops around the page. And you're going to make them kind of wonky and uneven and squiggly on purpose. And that will just immediately eliminate the need to try to be perfect on the whole thing. This, this gives yourself permission to um, be uneven and squiggly and, and all those other things that um, you sometimes might tend to have a little anxiety over. So just, you know, eliminate that problem and then you can instantly doodle. Trust me on this. So you're going to start on the outside and you're going to make loops working your way in like that. Oops. Wonky on purpose, right? And don't worry about that because this is not a uh, perfect doodle. Okay, good enough. Take your skinny pen and then you just start outlining your loops. And do them, do your outlines in the order that you um, drew the loops. And if you do that, you'll get a good layering uh, perspective thing going on. All the way across till you get to the next loop, and then outline this loop. Okay. <clears throat> now. Once you get all of your lines drawn, oh, we didn't do the insides. I like to do the insides. Let's do maybe, mm, that one's only got room for two, two or three or however many loops you can fit on the inside and make them wonky as well. Once you get comfortable with the wonky and with the doodling and with the putting the ink on the paper, then you can practice more with being more intentional and neater and less wonky. And then you'll figure out your doodling style. But step one is getting the ink on the paper. Okay. Now, you've doodled. Easy, right? You've got some uh, perspective going on. Some, you know, they're on top of each other. They look like they are anyway. And now we're ready to color. So what we're going to do for coloring, we're going to use some Prismacolor pencils. You need Prismacolors for this. I don't know of any other brand that will work. You can try it. Like I said, I don't know. I use Prismacolors exclusively. And the reason is because they're very, the lead is very soft and blendy, and we are going to blend. And to do that, 
we are going to use, there's lots of different things that you can use to blend your Prismacolors, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use some, uh, this is a sponge, I stole this idea from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, because, you know, she's all smart, she knows stuff, and she uses this, uh, like a sponge in, this, in a jar soaked with odorless mineral spirits, or Gamsol. So you're going to need that. You're going to need some blending tools. I tend to use sometimes a chamois. It's just a piece of a chamois. And then these little uh, tortellinis. Now, I never can remember what they're called. It's not for the tea. Totoro? That's <laughs> alright. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I just call them tortellinis <laughs> as far as I can go. <laughs> if you don't have tortellinis, uh, really, you can just use another, all these are is newsprint, they're rolled up pieces of newsprint. You can actually just use, a, wad up a piece of paper and blend with it. There's nothing magic in those. All they are is, their, their purpose is to create friction, that's what blends the color, and they're absorbent, and that's um, so that they hold the, the mineral spirits. Now, I've chosen my color palette carefully. And the way I chose this highly specialized palette is by the length of the pencil. <laughs> I just pulled all of my shortest pencils out of my stash, and I'm calling that my palette. Because <laughs> I need to get rid of these pencils. They're tiny. They're, there's one of Look at this one. Look, that's a blender. Oh, yeah, that's another way you can blend. I should demonstrate that, a colorless blender. Um, look how tiny. I've got a lot of mileage out of that. These just need, really need to be used up, so that's how I chose what to use. <clears throat> I tested them all out, you know, just to make sure I had a good variety of rainbow colors, because, you know, I like to use one of everything. And I'll show you how the Gamsol works. You put, lay some color down. These are the colors we'll be using. Then you can use one of your tortillas. This one's coming unwound. I have tape on a lot of mine because I'm really hard on them. and I'm a ham-handed artist, just so you know. <laughs> I'm like a four-year-old with my tools doing this. They don't last long. That's okay. All right. Dip this in here. Let it soak up some of the mineral spirits. And then you do this. And see how easy it is to blend? Look how nice. Yeah. So that is the magic here. When these get icky, because, you know, they're going to pick up a lot of color, there's lots of different ways that you can clean them. All you do is you sand it. And, okay, I use sometimes a piece of sandpaper. This is the easiest way to go. Cheap. It gets color on it. You just do this and sand it off. You can use sanding blocks, nail buffers. These are great because I use them on my actual nails, but when they start getting kind of worn, then they go into the Prismacolor box. So they're great. And these cheap emery boards are awesome. Find a good Because, see, so you can just take and So... Those are some options. You can buy the art supply stores, usually sell these little sandpaper things along with the um, temporaries. I know. I don't know what they are. Anyway, don't buy these. I'm, I, you know, even if you find them for a dollar, there's just a few sheets. For that same dollar, you know, you can get a huge pack of these at the dollar store. So this is kind of a waste of money. Don't buy that. Okay, now, I'm going to get away, and I will, sometimes when I'm doing a more precise pencil work, you know, I will dedicate a uh, tambourine, one tambourine for each color family, like this one would be the reds, this one's the blues, this one's the yellows, because, you know, they pick up color, and they will lay it right back down if you're not careful. But for what we're doing today, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to do a staining technique. Oh, I was going to demonstrate the pencil. I'm a little scatterbrained. I've had coffee. Okay, this is the colorless blender from Prismacolor. You can buy this uh, wherever you get your pencils. 
and what you do with it, it's just basically all it is is the same uh, product that's in the pencil just with no pigment. So it's just like clear waxy stuff. But see really it just blends by friction. And the thing with the colorless blender is it's really good for, you know, if you have these lines and you want to kind of fill them in. I don't know if you can even tell, but you know how when you first lay down some colored pencil, you know, it does, you still see some of the white through. You can keep on on and building up tons of color like that, or you can use a blender that will kind of work that pigment into the paper and eliminate the white. That's really what this blender is best for. When it comes to actual mixing two colors together, I prefer the Gamsol because the blender doesn't make the color really move very far. The Gamsol does. Okay, enough about the colored pencils. Let's just color this thing. And what we're going to do is um, be completely random. Don't worry about uh, what matches, what doesn't. Don't worry about staying in the lines. Just lay down color. You can kind of loosely follow your pattern or your um, design that you drew, but you really don't even have to do that. You're going to want to lay down a lot of color because we're actually going to remove <laughs> all the stuff that we're putting down. We're going to put it down and then take it off. I know. Sounds crazy. But it makes a really cool kind of uh, stained look. So let's go ahead. I am kind of pressing down pretty hard with this because I want to get that color into the paper. And I, I put the pencils that I use aside so that I don't keep picking up the same one over and over again. <laughs> so that's the only reason I'm tossing those over there. When I get to this point, you know, almost completely filled, there are a few colors that I like to use to fill in the gaps. Sometimes I'll use a light green or even like a bright lime green. These I consider these my neutrals. <laughs> And don't worry about, you know, oh my gosh, you turn that whole thing green. That doesn't matter because the colors that are underneath there have already stained the paper. So they're going to show up when we do this next part. The very best neutral blender ever, I mean this is the color that just fixes everything, is not jet. It, not sunburst yellow. <laughs> Did I not pull one? Yellow ochre. For some reason, don't know why, yellow ochre just sort of ties everything together and makes it wonderful and it's my favorite neutral blender. Okay. We're almost done. And now, are you thinking, oh my gosh, okay, she told us she's going to lay down all this color and then she's going to take it right back off. What a waste! Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Maybe. If you think it's a waste, don't take it off. Leave it. But, you'll be missing out on an opportunity for some interesting techniques if that bothers you. You have to be willing to use up your supplies. It's hard. Believe me, I know. Aww. Now once you get it all pretty much covered like you want, you have options. Uh, if you took the time to, you know, carefully color in each squiggle, you could call it done. You could do some blending with your colorless blender. This will help fill in some of the white space, as long as the white space is small. 
the shadow just doesn't really move the color around much. For large areas, I sometimes use a chamois. And all you need is just really a little friction is all it takes to blend these pencils. So the chamois works well. You just rub it. It does take a little elbow grease, but it works well. See? Uh, you can use your um, testimonies dry and blend that way. Or you can dip them in some Gamsol, odorless mineral spirits. And this one, you don't want to be quite so heavy handed because the Gamsol melts the color. And uh, you can just completely remove it, which we're going to do, but if that's not your purpose, then don't be too heavy handed with the Gamsol. See, look how beautifully that blends. Pretty, huh? But what we're going to do is a broader application. Ooh, I didn't really think far enough in advance. Well, that's okay. Okay. I'm going to use, let's just use this. <clears throat> I'm going to take my Gamsol and pour a little on here. Move this around like that. And wish I had a paper towel. Here's this. Oh, I let it dry. <laughs> it does evaporate quickly. <laughs> you got to move fast. Okay, work in small sections, move fast, and you are basically removing all of that top color, and what you're left with is a staining underneath. Got some viewers under there. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do the section right here. Or a little Gamsol. If I had a little sponge or something, that would really be better, but I was ill prepared. Move it around. And you can choose to, you know, like rub the holy heck out of it and remove a lot of it, or just barely rub and remove a little. Up to you. If I kept doing the Gamsol, it won't take it all the way down to white. You know, it won't won't completely eliminate it because some of the pigment has saturated into the fibers of the paper, but you can really lighten it up. I'm going to show you one that I did a while ago in a minute. You can see what I mean. But keep going. And this is why you want those initial colors that you lay down. You want a good variety. That's Jason's phone. Sorry. <clears throat> so that uh, when you remove the top layers of color, they'll show up in the staining. I actually think this looks pretty good. I'm going to go over it with my chamois to pick up any excess. And voila! Color pencil staining on a very simple doodle. What do we think? Do we like it? I like it. It's almost like painting with colored pencils. There is your technique and your doodle demo. And oh, I told you I was going to show you. Okay, here's here's one that I did. I had this um, this doodle. This one right here that uh, is available as a free download if you are a member of the Journaling by Fives group. You can access it through the files there. And it's just a fun, simple doodle that I did. And um, I printed it out and I colored it. And here's the way it turned out. And this is colored pencil every bit of it except for the um, I added some white gel pen to it so 
fancy you can do a lot with colored pencil and this the whole thing was done with the staining technique and then in some areas after I took all the color off I went back in and I added a little bit you know just like really really lightly added some more color not to where it's you know really really waxy just to kind of change the color in certain areas yeah you can do that with this so there you have it that's it that's all I have the end